welcome back friends today we will be seeing a short and sweet discussion about the puzzle which i posted two days before okay here keeping the first years and second years in mind i'll be starting the discussion from the utmost basics and i'll slowly climb to pharmacology as well as medical aspects okay come let's go on so i discussed a pro problem in which a uh, old man 65 year old old man was a hypertensive he was prescribed a drug he was taking 3 months and after taking it in excessive dose what happened was he developed gait disturbances and giddiness and lightheadedness and renal angle colic and nauseating feel and severe weakness was there see this and he had joint pains and some ecg changes were there and on measuring bp he developed this posture okay let's see the detailed discussion now so yes we'll be seeing some physiology okay so this is a picture of a nephron okay this part is the glomeruli this part is the tubular part of the nephron starting from the proximal convoluted tubule limb loop of henle thick ascending limb of loop of henle and this is the distal convoluted tubule and it ends in collecting duct okay so here we will just shortly see how the sodium is reabsorbed sodium is reabsorbed maximally in the proximal convoluted tubule 67% is absorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule then 25% is absorbed in the ascending limb of loop of henle then 5% is absorbed in distal convoluted tubule remaining is only 1 to 2% in collecting duct this is the basics of sodium absorption sodium is an osmotically active molecule what does that mean it attracts lots of water along with it when it goes off so wherever it goes it drags lots of water along with it okay let's go down so we are going to see a drug that acts on this part of the nephron ascending limb of loop of henle okay so first what is the normal functioning of the cell in ascending limb of loop of henle yeah this is it so what does this picture says see in short we can say it as a sodium potassium 2 chloride transporter it is a transporter which transports one sodium one potassium two chloride from this tubular lumen to the interstitium okay so what happens it transports sodium potassium 2 chloride from the lumen to the cell so from the cell sodium escapes out of the cell escapes out of the cell through the sodium potassium atps then what happens to the potassium just see some interesting thing happening here potassium is coming in through the sodium potassium atps as we know sodium potassium atps puffs out sodium takes in potassium so potassium is coming in here okay with this transporter also potassium coming in here so what is happening to the cell see this is the basics sodium is coming from the lumen and puffed out everywhere into the interstitium through sodium potassium atps what about the potassium see this potassium is coming in from every sides and from the transporter also so the cell is getting ballooned out with potassium now what does the cell should do so get rid of excess potassium inside the cell cell should puff out that it does with the help of this guns known as leaky channels leaky channels are located in the apical side of the uh, cell of loop of henle 
okay this puffs puffs out extra potassium outside so does this have any clinical significance let's see this positive charges accumulate on the apical side of the membrane providing a positive membrane potential outside the cell in the tubular lumen so what will this cause and how it is significant let's see see this potassium guns firing potassium outside the cell providing a positive membrane potential outside the cell this positive potential what does it do see positive charges like calcium and magnesium what happens is this positive charge and this positive charge will ripple each other so light charges ripple so this rippling force drives the magnesium and calcium to be absorbed not through the cell it is in between two cells so this type of absorption is known as paracellular absorption if it is absorbed through the cell it is known as transcellular absorption okay so what does this mean this sodium potassium 2 chloride transporter absorbs one sodium one potassium two chloride as well as calcium and magnesium so now you would have figured out any drug which inhibits this transporter will inhibit the absorption of all these ions so you can remember as it will cause what will it cause see since it is inhibited this positive potential is lost here so magnesium calcium no more absorbed so it is excreted in urine as you know if excess calcium is excreted in urine it will deposit along the tubular lumen and it might cause yeah renal stones that might be the cause for renal colic experienced by that grandpa okay so what more it will it cause potassium loss we will see this is most interesting about loop diuretic because it causes this abnormality more than any other electrolyte abnormality so we should learn in detail how potassium loss is going on first thing is as we know it inhibits this transporter sodium potassium 2 chloride transporter so potassium is no more absorbed it excreted in the urine that we know next thing is two concepts you should learn regarding potassium loss one is how much sodium is delivered to the distal tubule decides the potassium loss sir what are you saying yeah let me say like whenever sodium is lost from the body a body tries some uh, compensatory mechanisms to retain the sodium like that the distal tubule is told na some 5% reabsorption sodium that will increase its absorption so that it is it tries to conserve sodium okay so what happens by taking one positive charge in our body excretes a positive charge out to maintain electrical neutrality so sodium is absorbed at the expense of what positive ion yeah it is the potassium in the principal cell so see one positive ion sodium is absorbed in place of one positive ion potassium so one positive ion in one positive ion out this is the reason for caliuresis we say as potassium loss so one more reason is there what is the one more reason we told that it inhibits sodium potassium 2 chloride transporter that means chloride delivery to the distal tubule is also enhanced so what will chloride do chloride is a negative charge and potassium is a positive charge so we know that opposite charges attract each other there is a bond between the opposite charges see she is a chloride ion and he is a potassium ion so this potassium just sees how to go with this girl out of the window so he saw that he see that uh, leaky channels so yes i will run off he runs off with that girl so that means there is further potassium loss in our body so that means 
potassium loss is occurring due to three main reasons. So that also means this is the reason for the muscle weakness experienced by the grandpa as well as in ECG if you would have seen there is a U wave. Okay. And other ECG changes and other uh, symptoms due to other electrolyte disturbances I will be discussing in a separate video. Okay. Then what about uric acid? So the grandpa was experiencing joint pain. Na? So what is the reason for that? The reason is our serum osmolarity depends on this is the equation for serum osmolarity. Okay. Twice the concentration of sodium plus bun means blood urea nitrogen by 6 plus glucose by 18. That means if the body is losing sodium, so the body will compensate somehow by attracting some other osmotically active molecules. So that means sodium, blood urea nitrogen and glucose. These are the osmotically active molecules in our body. So if sodium getting lost, some body gets some compensatory activity by absorbing this bun. Bun is nothing but blood urea nitrogen. So we have a exchange anion exchanger in the kidney which exchanges one, one anion in place of uric acid. So uric acid increases in the body leading to hyperuricemia. So if the grandpa has had joint pains before, might be due to gout, it might have exaggerated. So thus I have explained why the symptoms occurred in that grandpa. Okay. So that's it. Let me recapitulate once more the symptoms experienced by the grandpa. So this is the trosius sign. This occurs because hypocalcemia is going on. Why hypocalcemia is going on? Because the calcium is lost in the urine. Next thing is C. QT interval is prolonged due to hypocalcemia as well as hypokalemia. Then see actually in hypokalemia this T wave is split into two halves. Actually that is a uh, reason for U wave. T wave is split into smaller initial T wave and large initial U waves. This I will be discussing in detail in further lectures. Okay. Then joint pains due to hyperuricemia. Then weakness due to hypokalemia. Then nausea, gait disturbance due to hyponatremia. Though hyponatremia is rare with loop diuretics, it's more common with thiazide diuretics. Friends, I told every side effect just to make you understand in a pictorial manner. You may not expect all these side effects in a patient receiving loop diuretics. Okay. It's just to make you understand with further increased detail and you should know that these are the possibilities which might happen that's all is it's not that it must happen okay yeah that's it for the day uh, this is uh, giddiness is also due to hyponatremia so that's it for the day who am i this drug is a loop diuretic because it acts on the loop of henley so loop diuretic most commonly we will prefer furosemide so that's it for the day friends. I hope you enjoyed the session. So if you like this, you can like my channel, subscribe it as well as comment your opinion about the session and how to improve further. Okay. Till then. Bye bye.